All right, let me go over some list of prayer real quick here. Because we want to pray for today as well. Let's be sure to remember the family of Miss Lucille Doherty uh, in our prayers when we pray today. Her funeral will be here to church at one o'clock today. Don't forget that Miss Lucille Doherty's funeral is here at one o'clock today. Be sure to remember also uh, Max Cartwright uh, in our prayers today. Also John Coots. Uh, in our prayers today and just of course remember our entire list of prayer when we pray today as well uh, Sure good seeing you all uh, Birthday wise today uh, Eli Landon's birthday is today. Happy birthday to you guys as, as well and uh, We won't forget it for sure. We won't forget. All right. Let's have a word of prayer. Okay, Lord do want to come to you Lord right now and Lord just say how much we do Lord love you Lord, you've just been so good to us, Lord, so many ways, so many times, Lord, today. And God, today, bless this service, Lord, in every way that you see fit, the ones on Facebook, the ones who are here today, Lord. And God, bless our singing as well, our song is close as well, God, as you see fit, Lord. And God, all the ones today, Lord, to prayer, that you'll also, Lord, take care of them. God, once again, bless this church, all of our friends today. That's my praise prayer, and amen. We'll sing number 518 this morning. I know y'all don't have a book, but it's Shall We Gather at the River. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Shall we gather at the river Where bright angel feet have trod With its crystal tide forever Flowing by the throne of God Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river, soon our pilgrimage will see. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with the melody of peace. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Well, I guess my off here, but that's okay with you all. I had a hard time last Sunday staying still. I stood in one place the entire time, which you all know it's hard for me to do. I want to read to you today to a, from, from a, a few spots today uh, in John's Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the Gospel of John. Turn to me if you would into John 3. I want to read to you there in John 3. I'm going to read to you also today from John 8 and also from John the 12th chapter, okay? Let me say to you uh, real quick here, uh, appreciate uh, Eddie, Doug, Danny, you guys getting uh, our, us all parked uh, in the right direction. Also appreciate uh, Eli, Daniel, you guys doing that there, John as well, for the Sunday lessons today as well, you guys. But I do want to read to you today here from John the 3rd chapter. And I want to read to you there, it's verse 14. Uh, and friends, you and I know that there is a, there, there's a statement that Jesus continues to make. He makes it at least three times here in John's gospel. And in this gospel, he says the words lifted up. And, and friends, you and I know that the entire time that he was here upon this earth, he foretold his death, didn't he? He knew the future. He knew what was going to happen, didn't he? And he was trying to let them know and convince them what was going to happen in the future. He said there in John 3 in verse 14, Christ said, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And then there in John 8, turn there with me if you get a chance. John chapter 8. Christ said there in verse 28. 
John 8, 28, Christ also said these words, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things. Now look with me, if you would, let's last place here in John 12. And I want to key on this verse today. John 12, and the verse is actually verse 32. A verse that I think you and I have heard this verse uh, many times talked about there in John 12 and verse 32 to where Christ said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And let me say this to you. Uh, he, he will draw all men, amen, women and children unto him. And let me say this to you. Lift it up in a literal, physical sense, we know for sure, but also lift it up in a spiritual sense, didn't he? And friends, you and I know that our Savior there was continuing to foretell his future, foretell his death that was coming, and that you and I, dear friends, then, but, you know, as today we'd say, and still many folks that you and I know, that we work with, they're our friends, they're our neighbors. There are folks that we care about. There are folks that in this time we've talked to, we've checked upon, but yet these people still have not grasped that Christ himself went to a cross and died for our sins, didn't he? They still don't realize that. And dear friends, Christ said there in, our, in just in John's gospel three times that I'll be lifted up. He said there again in, in, in John 12, 32, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. And I'm thankful that, dear friends, the Lord himself did that for us. Amen? Knowing that he himself had to be. And friends, this was no, this was no shoulda, coulda, woulda thing for Christ. Dear friends, we have to realize that Christ himself said that. He knew why he came to earth for. Dear friends, why God had him leave heaven's splendor, come this earth, live here as a man. But not just live here, did he? He came here for a purpose, didn't he? He came here to live here, to die here, to rise again, to come again, didn't he? And friends, that great truth, and let me say it to you, Christmas time comes around, we're always merry. We always have great cheer, don't we? Well, dear friends, in, in this day and time, here we are, we're a week from when you and I celebrate Easter. Let me say it to you right now, and I love you. You and I should celebrate Easter every day of our life. Dear friends, that is not something that Brian Jones thinks about once a year. Brian Jones remembers the death of my Savior every day. And dear friends, I don't just remember his death, but I remember that my Lord saved your friends. He overcame that death, amen? And dear friends, you and I know here we are uh, a week, you would say, from Easter. What we would say, Palm Sunday, a, a, a day that you and I know that Christ himself, he entered the city, didn't he? That day, he entered the, on that day upon that mule. And dear friends, he was given praise that day as a king, wasn't he? We have our kids today with the palms, don't we? And we sing Hosanna, Hosanna, don't we? We were celebrating the Dear friends, we must realize this. A week from him, from his death, he entered, entered the, the city that day upon that praise as a king. Many praised him, but many were made mad, weren't they? And dear friends, because if they were mad, it put things in motion that led to a week of our Savior. And dear friends, he knew he was preparing himself, wasn't he? Preparing for what God had asked him to do. He didn't ask me. He didn't ask you, dear friends. But God, in fact, he asked a man who knew no sin to die for the entire world. 
And friends, it's, it's been so good as the, the, the lesson today in Sunday school, uh, uh, Daniel's lessons on Sunday night have led us all the way up to Easter. And, and I want to say it to you again, and, and, I, and I want you to know this. I know we've seen some things that we would say have been gruesome, but Brian, I've, I've seen things on TV of people's deaths, and it, I, I can't imagine it being any worse. Well, I want you to know one thing. The death of our Lord and Savior was the worst death ever died. And you said, Brother Brian, that there were people who died on the cross in that day and time by the hundreds, by thousands. There were. Common criminal and thieves died that way just like our Lord and Savior. But our friends, here's the key. Jesus upon himself that day bore me. I may be able to come out, come out, out to your car right now and you get out and I may be able to put you on my back and I, I may be able to pick you up maybe and, and carry you for a very short distance. But can you imagine bearing the weight of the entire world upon your shoulders? Christ did that, didn't he? He didn't, he didn't just bear Brian Jones' sins. He bore all of our sins, didn't he? The sins of a lost and dying world. And friends, I wouldn't be saved right now, and you wouldn't either, without Christ in our life. Dear friends, that death bore a weight of the world, didn't it? And let me say this to you. I know that today was a special day for Aberdeen. Uh, tonight was planned to be our Lord's Supper. And let me say this to you, our Lord's Supper is not canceled, it's just postponed. Amen? There'll be a day when Aberdeen Church, dear friends, here this year will meet for our Lord's Supper again. And remember, remember what Christ did for you and I through that supper. Remembering what that bread represents. What that fruit of the vine, dear friends, the body of the Christ, those things, dear friends, are precious to you and I. And I want you to know this here. There are, there are new song books. There are new hymn books being written in our day and time. And they are hymn books that are appropriate, some would say, for our liking. And in those song books, they've left out the word blood. Because the blood offends somebody. I want you to know, right dear friends, if Christ's blood offends you, it needs to offend you. Dear friends, his blood, as the Bible says, as Peter himself said, Peter said, the blood of Christ, dear friends, is just him. His blood to all of us, dear friends, is precious. And dear friends, his blood that doesn't offend me. Dear friends, his blood changed my life. Dear friends, you and I, without that blood being shed, and I, listen, his blood was not spilt. When, when you and I spill something, it's an accident, isn't it? We don't need to do it. Christ's blood was not spilt, was it? His blood was willfully shed for all of us. It's a huge difference there, amen? To where someone spills, dear friends, Christ on that cross, his blood being shed was no accident, but it had to be. God required for our Lord and Savior to cross that path to change our eternity, change our future. Dear friends, without Christ's blood, I have no future and no eternity without him in my life. And that blood has changed me forever. Dear friends, uh, I guess I would say these words to you today. That dear friends, uh, today was his first steps towards his death, weren't they? And I've, I've, I've chose out five key words today to, to preach to you about further in that day and, and knowing about those days nearing Christ's death. And that first word that I want to talk to you about today is this. It is the word betrayal. 
We live in a day and time that where betrayal runs rampant in our country, in our world. It's, to people today, be, betrayal is nothing, is it? But you know it's here, dear friend. Our Lord and Savior, he was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver, wasn't he? Our Bibles today say these words. Our, our Bibles say that the love of money is the root of all evil. Dear friends, it's, it's not money, but money it meant. But it's when you cross the line and you love it. There's the issue. And I want you to know this today, I believe Judas, as the Bible said, he held the back. I think Judas fell in love with money. And he saw opportunity, didn't he? And dear friends, those who came to see him offered him money to portray our Lord and Savior. And dear friends, Judas upon that day, he did that, didn't he? But dear friends, not just the word betrayal, but also the word arrest. Our Lord and Savior there uh, was arrested, wasn't he? We find him there in the garden and dear friends with the disciples and he was arrested, wasn't he? He was taken like a mere criminal. He, he was taken as someone who had done wrong, who you and I know who never did anything wrong, did he? Any different? He wasn't just arrested that day, but dear friends, you and I know this. And I, I have to ask myself this question, and, and I mean this seriously. The disciples upon that night of our Lord and Savior's betrayal and arrest, dear friends, even the, even the disciples, even the eleven who were left there, even they fled, didn't they? E even they walked away. They had seen him raise the dead. They had seen him heal the blind and sick. But yet, when it came right down to it, the eleven... They fled, didn't they? And here's what I want to ask Brian Jones even today, and I want you to ask yourself that question. If worse came to worst, Christ himself, if I was in that situation, if I had been there that night with my Lord Savior, and they had came to arrest him, what would I have done? It's a question we all need to ask. Would my faith have stood there in the midst of trouble? Would my faith have stood there in the midst of being myself arrested and stood there in my faith by my Lord and Savior? Or would Brian Jones have tucked his tail and ran to? And you see, that's one thing that you and I so many times never ask ourselves. We never cross the line there and say, Well, Brian, if I'd been there, I would have stood there with my son of the Lord. I would have ran. Would you? Is our faith today strong enough to stand in those times of test? And dear friends, you and I know that it went further. It went further than just the betrayal and the arrest, but it also went to one more word, and that word is denial. We know that Peter, who you and I know, the Bible would teach us that Jesus loved him, didn't he? How much that Christ loved a man named Peter. He, he in fact, asked him about, about the church and what it would be upon him. And, and Peter said, Lord, upon a rock, upon you. The church is based upon you, Lord. But even Peter, he ran. And then when he came back, he was questioned. He was asked. He was asked, our Bible says he was asked three times if he, if he in fact knew Jesus, wasn't he? And our Bibles say that three times, not once, not twice, but three times that Peter even denied knowing Jesus. And friends, so many times when, when saved people are put upon peer pressure, so many times we are also guilty of the very same sin. And let me say to you right now, that in, in itself was sin, wasn't it? To deny knowing Christ 
himself to personally deny and say I don't know him that was sin in itself wasn't it and so many times friends we are easy to overlook our own sins and see the sins of others your friends today I'm not doing that today today I'm not trying to overlook what I've done but I want to make sure that my Christian life lines up with what Christ has for me that Brian Jones does not betray my faith that Brian Jones doesn't deny my uh, dear friend, that Brian Jones will stand there when the midst of things when different when things don't seem right and things are wrong that Brian he will stand there and not run I'll stand there in my faith dear friends knowing what I believe in I'm going to tell you right now, that's Christ himself. What did, what did our Bibles teach us? And Paul said, all I know is Christ and him crucified. And I want you to know this. That's enough, isn't it? That's enough. I, I want you to know, right? You might, Brother Brian, you may be here today or, or watching today on Facebook and say, Brother Brian, I don't, I don't know anything today about Jesus. How to, how to be saved it's as easy as this it's as easy as professing Christ and knowing he was crucified it's, 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 it's that, that simple that he gave his life for someone like me now friends these words go a step further don't they because you and I know about the Betrayal, the arrest, the denying, but we also know he stood before Pilate, didn't he? And dear friends, the how before Pilate we saw our Lord and Savior there. And dear friends, how Christ, our Bibles teach, we've learned this the past month in detail about how Jesus was, was scourged, wasn't he? He was flogged, wasn't he? How the Romans had put that into a science to where they would beat a man within almost his life being taken. Dear friends, truth be known, here it is. Our Lord and Savior was beaten half to death before he was at Calvary, wasn't he? Our Lord and Savior, dear friends, went through a scourging like no other. He was flawed, dear friends, beaten, and dear friends, then our Lord and Savior did this last great thing, didn't he? Because when it comes to you and I, we said, Brother Brian, if I had went through betrayal and being arrested, if I had went through being, Brother Brian, deny, Brother Brian, if I had went through a beating like Christ went through, I probably would have stopped. Brother Brian, I, I probably would have gave it up right there. But not Christ. Not Christ. Christ, dear friends, went through the betrayal, arrest, denial, the scourging. And my Savior and your Savior did one last great thing. He picked up my cross and he carried up Calvary's heel, didn't he? Not his, no, no, listen to me. This was not the cross of Christ. He bore my cross that day. And he bore yours, didn't he? Upon that day, dear friends, my Lord and Savior, your Lord, dear friends, that day carried my cross up Calvary's hill. Was laid there upon that cross, wasn't he? And dear friends, you and I know he was platted on his head with thorns, wasn't he? My Lord and Savior, my King, my Almighty, my everything, who, dear friends, desires to wear a crown of gold, was given that day a crown of thorns, wasn't he? He was mocked, abused, he was hit. The Bible would teach us, they pulled his beard out, didn't they? And our Lord and Savior didn't stop there, did he? Dear friends, our Bibles never say that he fought this, did he? Didn't fight, did he? Didn't fight. 
didn't get mad. But our Lord, our Lord Savior was willing to lie there and have those spikes put in his hands and his feet. Dear friends, he did that so someone like you and I wouldn't have to. Something that Brian Jones personally, dear friends, I know this. And I want you to too. I deserve that death. My sins, my lifestyle, my regrets, what I've done before. All those things were worthy of that cross. Dear friends, today that cross was mine. That cross, it was yours. He did that. He himself didn't stop, didn't give up, dear friends, but he did that for you. And I want you to know this day, I've heard folks say, well, Jesus... He wasn't that strong uh, somewhere around six hours and death got him. Mm. May I correct you, my friends. Death did not kill my Lord and Savior, dear friends. Didn't do it. Death didn't take him, dear friends. Our Lord and Savior allowed himself to die, didn't he? Death didn't beat him, dear friends. In fact, he defeated death. Amen. Amen, church. Our Lord and Savior was not beaten by death. He allowed himself to die. And remember those words? Well, oh, I tell you, he said some great ones, didn't he? Some, some great ones. And, and dear friends, first of all, he said this. He asked God upon that time of his death, he asked God, didn't he? To forgive us. God forgive them for they know not what they do. Wow. I want you to know this. That, that is a love. That is a forgiveness that you and I will never know. That, that, that is a point in time. That is the type of forgiveness that I don't think you and I can possibly do. All the things that he went through, an innocent man died for someone like me someone like you who truly was guilty and dear friends in his last words he asked God didn't he he asked God himself, he asked God to forgive them because they don't know what they're doing wow and you see it's hard for this preacher to understand today how people can still live in our day and time and still be lost. How people will, will, will willingly, they, they will willingly put off being saved. They will willingly not live their life the way God wants them to and they'll put the point of friends of knowing that if they die in that condition, that they die lost. What's our Bible say there? Our Bibles teach us that dear friends, that Christ came to seek and to save those who were lost. That was me. That was me. Dear friends, I didn't find him. He found me. And guess what? If you've been saved today, he also found you, didn't he? You didn't find him, no. See, it's, it's, it's not in our nature. But dear friends, God's nature is to forgive. God's nature is so loving, dear friend, that God was willing to send his son to die for the entire world. Dear friends, Christ didn't come about it. If you read John 3, 14, John 3, 16, John 3, 17, Christ didn't come, dear friends, to condemn the world, did he? No, no. The Bible says that Christ came that all may be saved. And I want you today to know this. If you don't believe that you and I are living in the last days, I'm going to pray for you. If you can't realize the situation that our world is in, if you can't realize God once again 
See, today I read to you three spots that where Christ said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, he said, see, three times he said, if I be lifted up, then I'll draw all men to me. Dear friends, just one more time what God's doing for this world is doing this. God is saying to us time and time and time again, I'm coming. I'm coming. Be ready. Well, I want you to know right now, dear friends, that Christ died that you and I could be ready, didn't he? He didn't die for us saying, well, you know what? I'm going to go halfway up Calvary's hill and I'm going to drop this cross and I'm going to stop right there. Didn't do it, did he? But our Lord and Savior went all the way, didn't he? Brian Jones has got in some tough spots sometimes and things got hard and, and Brian had thought, I've, I've had thought, oh, Lord, I, I'm, I'm going to stop halfway. I, Lord, I, I'm going to stop right here, Lord. I've gone as far as I can go. Lord, I... I've gone this far, I'm going to stop right here. Boy, aren't you glad that Jesus didn't stop halfway up Calvary's hill? Aren't you glad Christ didn't call out to God and say, God, take this from me. I, I don't want it anymore. But dear friend, our Lord and Savior went all the way, didn't he? Because he knew he had to. Dear friends, there, there are things that, that you and I know that we have to do. And I want to tell you right now, there's one thing in your life. If you're in this service today or you're on Facebook right now, I want you to know there's one thing in your life you have to do. You have to be saved. Oh, I hadn't got to. I, I, I understand that. But I want to tell you right now, the best decision I've ever made in my life was being saved. Because, dear friends, when everything is over and done with, when there'll be no more wars and rumors of wars, there'll be no plagues, no more viruses, when it's all over and done, dear friends, the only thing, the only thing that will matter in your life, it, it won't be the house you lived in, the money you had, the car you drove. Those things won't matter to God. They don't matter right now to God. Your dear friends, what will matter to God in that day and time is what you've done with Jesus. I had a, had a man one time tell me, he, I mean, he actually told me that I was trying to witness to him and tell him about Jesus because he wasn't saved or anything. He told me, he said, uh, then preacher, he said, what if everything you're doing is a waste of time? He said, he said what if all this church stuff and about Christ, what if all that, that's, that's just nothing? And I said, well, I'll tell you. I said, if, if everything I'm doing right now was nothing, then I've still lived a good life and I'll die that way. But I said, what if everything I'm saying to you is real is a truth and you never accept it or how will your life end up and boy I tell you he, he didn't like it but I'm going to tell you right now dear friends it's the truth isn't it dear friends God himself loved you enough he loved you enough to send his only his only child, his only son, to die for me and you. And I'm going to tell you right now, if, if I were to go around to every car right now and, and even ask myself this, what, what if I were, I were to come by and say, would, 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 would you all give, give one of your children to, to die for somebody you didn't know? Would, would you give one of your children to, to die for someone who was unworthy of it? We, man, we, we'd all say, well, but Brian, of course not. I would say the very same thing. But see, that's what's there between, between me and you and God, isn't it? Because God, did, it was never a question in God's mind that he was not going to send a Savior to die for someone like me and die for someone like you. Dear friends, I believe we're living in the last days. 
Dear church, I believe if even you and I knew how close those times were to us right now, we'd be shocked. Our Bibles say this. Our Bibles say that you and I should long for His coming, shouldn't we? Amen? If, if, if you read in the very last part of Revelation, the last two verses there, John himself, the very same John who wrote this today, the very same John said in that verse, in that very last part of Revelation, John said these words, Even so come Lord Jesus. John's saying this, I'm ready right now. Amen? Come life, come death, whatever tomorrow may hold. John said, even so, come Lord Jesus. Today, I want you to know this, that God loves you. Here we are a, a week from Easter, but dear friends, that Easter celebration, that, that Easter remembrance, that should be so real in our hearts and lives, not just one day a year, but should be something we think about, thank God for every day of our life. I, I thank God daily for sending Christ to die for me. And dear friends, today, Brother Brian, I'm, I'm not where I should be with God. Brother Brian, I'm, I'm just so glad to be in this church service today or, or maybe watching it online or to watch our lesson for Sunday school today online. I'm so thankful to watch these things today. But Brother Brian, I, I'm not close to God like I used to be. But Brian, there's unconfessed sin in my life. There's hurt. There's regret in my life. And I don't know what to do with it. Well, I'm going to tell you today what to do with it. And all those things today, give those things to Jesus. So dear friends, He Himself takes care of all those things and makes all things new, doesn't He? But Brian, today in, in my heart, in my life, I've, I've never before in my life been saved before. I don't even know what it means to be saved. Well, dear friends, here's how simple it is to be saved. How easy it is to give your heart and life to Christ. Just a short, simple prayer saying this, Lord, forgive me of all my sins. I, I know I'm a sinner. I come to you today and give all those sins to you, Lord. I, I believe you came this earth. I believe that you died and that you rose again just for me. I believe your blood was shed to wash away my sins. Lord, forgive me right now. Come into my heart and my life and save me. Dear friends, a simple prayer like that is what Brian Jones prayed one day. And dear friends, upon that day, he saved me. And I want you to know this, I have been saved from that day until now. That one prayer of faith, believing in my heart, will carry me through, amen? It'll carry me through from then to now and into eternity. Let me say it to you, dear friends, and close this way today. As Christ said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Today, I believe this. Today, you are in this service today in your cars. You, today, you are watching on Facebook right now. You heard on the radio, you watched our Sunday school lesson. Something today from Aberdeen Church, God brought you our way. Not for us, not to praise us or benefit us, no, no. But because of what we've done, what God's allowed us to do has brought you our way today because you're the one. You're the one who needs to get your life right before it's ever too late. You're the one who's lost today, never has been saved, but by the day I want to be. Dear friends, today I want to pray for you and close this service, okay? Let's pray right now. Lord, I want to come to you right now, Lord, and just, uh, God, thank you for Aberdeen Church, what it means to my heart and my life, what it means to us all. God, for your blessings upon our lives today. God, for being in this service today to be able to share your gospel. And God, today, if there's someone in our midst, 
on Facebook, who's lost right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you'd work in hearts and lives today, Lord. That you'd save souls before it's ever too late, Lord. Lord, today, because you're lifted up, Holy Spirit, they're drawn to you. God, today, save souls, change lives today, Lord. We want to pray for all those who we know are hurting today who are down right now, whatever it might be, those who are fighting this virus, who are sick already. God, those who've lost loved ones, God, we need your strength today. God, in so many ways, God. God, you uplift and you bless this church, bless everyone here, their families, God. God, help everything that Aberdeen's doing, Lord, to spread your word in this day and time. And God, looking forward to a day when we'll be back in your house, Lord, as a family together once again. And God, once again, I give you all the honor, glory, and praise today that, Lord, that you were lifted up for us all. As you came here, lived here, died here, Lord. And God, that you rose again. Lord Jesus, you rose again for someone like me. God, once again, we do praise you and we do love you. I pray this prayer. And amen. Amen. I love you all. Look forward to seeing you all again.